All I know is that I am allowed to be as mad about that as I want to be. I have earned that right. Hello, and welcome back to the Ether Keep. I will be your host, Levin Bacon, and today we are frying that bacon with personally one of my favorite and most disgusting teams that I've made. We're going to have a great time. You're going to have a great time. Until we don't, you'll see what I mean. Just stick around. There's going to be some cool stuff. So what do we have? Oh, we have Ivy getting in a little bit deeper than I think they thought she was supposed to. And I really like this unit. I liked Ivy and Engage. And I think that they integrated her into Faye really well because she's interesting. She's unique. She uses new or newish mechanics. But she does all these things in a way that isn't totally free, totally overpowered. There's some balance here. She has to get that follow-up attack, she has to survive, she has limitations and counterbalances within her kit. I think more units should be designed this way, and I'm really sad I didn't get more copies of her, because I also want more of her fodder and the merges on her. But, sometimes that's the way the gotcha goes. Anyway, we're kind of uh, double guidance, hopping, bombing, and Igrin gets the big hit on Marth, who is surprisingly difficult to take down. It's exactly what you want to see if you're a me. And that is one of the best replays from this week, but don't worry, there's plenty more Spire, so don't go anywhere. Before we get into all that, though, I just want to talk a little bit about this team and how it works. So, uh, really the cornerstone of this is I wanted to get rid of Embla and replace her with something else because she only covers part of the map in terms of making it hard to save and difficult to predict what's going to go, what's going to happen. Dogger can be a lot less predictable, create a very similar effect in ways that people will see coming way less. And people miss Embla somewhat often already, so she's a real boon to have on the team. So, also her refined just kind of goes insane. She stacks so many stats and has the DR, the true damage, that you just... You, I don't think people understand the respect that she actually requires as a defense unit, and it's something to see. I'm not sure if it comes up in these replays, but uh, in my testing I was very impressed. And with her, we have Igrin, of course, now fully invested with the Ascended Asset, the Life and Death 4, and she needed those because we gave this girl, these, these girls, these ladies, these women, uh, Growing Wind instead of Blazing Wind, just to make it a little bit more annoying to save with uh, no emblem making save more appealing of a choice. It's harder to dodge that thing, because you know I love to dodge the AoE, and I gotta make sure people can't just do it back to me. We got Ivy, you know where you love her. She has reposition, so that um, if someone should attempt to hit and run and Ivy is still standing, she will move after these two, which gives Plumeria the chance to guidance jump dance and do something cool. Um, also would put her in a position where maybe somebody else gets guidance, because we got double the guidance here, which is always fun. Um, we have the classic Asker, who is now running Special Spiral. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, the damage output is better. Almost wondering if Bonfire would be stronger at this point, but the healing is just so spicy, and I invested in this man, and I want to get my money's worth. My orbs is worth. Who else do we have? Uh, Plumeria, freshly guidanced with the fabled arcane inheritance chain. You know what she does. She dances and she guides. And Frere doing Frere things. That's where the team works. The idea is that there's a rally trap onto one of these two. And that greatly expands the range of, these, of all of these units. So that someone who thinks they're getting only one will in fact get two or three. And then we have the guidances here to make things that much more unpredictable and crazy stuff happen. Now, let's get into all of the replays. We're just going to go through all of them this week because it's chaos. So fewer units means faster replays. The math checks out. And <laughs> on the very first night, I did not have a team together. So I did my best to copy and remix Infantry Pulse's return trap. No, rescue trap. This is what it looked like. Um, I got pretty lucky here, I would say, but I'm happy that it worked out, so... Hortensia moves up, Kanto's away, puts Lysithia in position to do her thing, and could get danced, or... D this is actually a pretty competent nuke, which I actually like in a dancer these days. Hot take, I know, but they're gonna get baited, and they might as well be able to do something with it, so... That's kind of why she's here, that and the guidance. That, and also, uh, I didn't like... Attuned Peonies... Um, Kanto sort of made my rally and return trapping more difficult. So that's why she was not the choice for these teams. 
But, uh, yeah, this team did exactly what I needed to do, which was get one win while I went in the lab to build the team I just explained to you. So, as you can see, this is pretty well and done. Now we can get into the real content. And we started off with a unit who, if you watched last week's videos, you'll know, is a little bit of an enemy of mine. So it's always nice to do the win against her. Um, as is so often the case with this style of team that I've set up, not 100% sure they understood the range expansion that was coming in. So, Ivy doing it once again. Getting the jump on the Dancer, and laying down a, just a brilliant set of terrain right there. Uh, actual growing wind value because it hits Altina. And we can finish Altina there. Looks like it would have been a one-shot, but if her weapon was active at over 25%, that would not have finished the job, so... Um, actually, huge value from Growing Wind almost immediately. And this is even before I maxed her out. I think that was what <laughs> finally motivated me to do it. And I like Igrin. She deserved it, so that was worth doing. Onward! Okay, here's a very interesting one. Speaking of my arch nemeses, <laughs> I don't recognize this guy. I forget his name. Ooh. I'm gonna be looking like that real soon. Can't Hero Rises can't come soon enough. It's tomorrow, so I mean, like, maybe it can. Uh, we got the, the this guy, we got the her, and the he, and what are they gonna do about it with it, for it? So he just gets away with that, apparently, because like I was saying, IV is balanced. She doesn't get the DR cut on the first hit. Balanced unit. And they lucked their safety fence into a good spot, so they actually have plenty of time to hit me and run me. But, um, because of like, this sort of forces the two range go going in, it's hard to get through this stuff, so these two are a little bit safer. And there's no way this guy can take down this thing, right? We have, uh, we have guard. We have guard, he has guard. So they have to back off, and they actually can't back off as far as they'd like. So you know what that means? It's party time. The wind grows, the Krom dies. Dagger just dropping actual bombs, like... This unit didn't used to hit like that, I'm having a lot of fun with her now. And here's the really cool thing. So... Uh, Dimitri's got all of his stuff together, right? Dimitri's ready to cook. Well, the thing about that is actually... His effects were not effective at start of turn because he had 1 HP before the healing tower. So he doesn't have enough statuses to engage Prime. I guess she could give one, but then she would be like in range of everything. There's just no real way out of here. This is just not going to go well. Um, Asker may well survive one hit and then Igri can come in, Hardy Bearing finish him off. This might not look like the most ambitious uh, defense replay, but I think it actually says a lot about how strong my, about how much I, why I like my team so much, how strong I think it is, how, how good it feels to have put this together from nothing, or from the dregs of my the anima team, I guess. What do we have here? Scary unit, scary unit, scary unit. This is just like the four biggest public enemies in Fae. And what do they do? Once again, looks like they don't know about the range expansion. Or maybe they just have that much faith in Leon, but, okay, well, actually, uh, Leon is not getting AoE'd, which is shocking to me. But, that's very good. And, she just goes down. She could actually get over to here, too, because of Guidance. And they just don't have a play here, right? Like, I'm sure they can take out Igrin, but then it's hard to deal with everything here. And if you leave any of the either of these two units alive, they're going to take someone else. And three KOs? That's minus zero lift, even if they take it. So, I'm happy with that outcome. This is the first one we watched. Now, what beats this team? Uh, I don't think it's going to surprise you too much what beats this team, but it is maybe not the Edelgard you expected. Hmm? Uh propaganda to invest in the upcoming Hall of Forms, perhaps? We got a uh, combination AoE Gale Forest team. Very strong. Worth, uh, worth playing. Here's what it looks like in practice. What did they have on this one? Okay, that's pretty much what I run on that guy. 
So that's how they get the full charge. No need for too many shenanigans. And she can cleanly take out Ivy, which does hurt me. Probably the biggest weakness of the team is the vulnerability on Ivy there. Maybe a, a trap right here would be would be smart, maybe? Maybe Dagger doesn't need one as much? I don't know. But uh, this is the Wings of Mercy on her. And just getting down to 1 HP like that means that Edelgard can actually tank stuff. Or getting Dagger down so that all of her effects are not active means that Edelgard can live there. Honestly, Galactic plays, and I was immune, so I gotta say it's more cool to see than painful to watch. So really well played by Moji. The Moji movie. That's what we just watched. Um, looks like a failure. Minus zero. I would argue it's a success personally, but that's just me. What do we have here? Bonus Lumera. Um, we got a Camilla fan. We got more of this guy. This guy is just always here all the time now. And uh, some standards. Or some, you know, units we've gotten a bit more accustomed to over time is what I mean there. Two very good units who I've used quite a bit myself, so no shade whatsoever. Just, they're not that guy. This guy. And <laughs> I hate that guy. So Ivy can just do that. I did not really have a strong understanding of her matchup spread. I've been extraordinarily impressed by seeing her in action this week and as an arena bonus unit. It's so good. And Leon does what he can, but uh, is not actually able to take out the biggest threats facing him, it seems. Does manage to end turn on Dogger, and... That's actually wild that he can tank the Asker SS4 Flare that well. And just really making that money off of the end turn shenanigans. That is a really strong ability on offense in a way that I would not really consider it. Like, I wouldn't think to use him as an offense unit, but there is real value, and we're seeing it here. Hopefully this is a situation where everyone gets what they want. Because I'm certainly happy enough with my zero lift loss, and they didn't use a ladder, so maybe there's something for everybody. All right, time for another true banger. We got um, what looks like a very player phase oriented team here. They're very, a very player phase oriented team that needs a little bit of time to set up. So they're going to take that. Unfortunately, uh, once again, the memo was lost in the mail. They don't have that kind of time. It's crazy that they managed to only have one unit in range. And if they, well, no, I guess if they had a safety fence that was still up, they wouldn't have the spot up for the extra units, so there's really no way to run, even in 5 unit chaos season. So what do we have here? Dagger enables Ivy to make the jump, and Asker actually gets that deep in, which I just think is amazing. I'm very happy with the reach this team manages to make happen. I'm, I literally spent like six or seven hours tweaking this team, and I think I got to a very nice version of it. So I hope you're enjoying it as much as I do, because I think it's just lovely. What do we have here? More of this guy, supported by this guy, no less. Um, it's more public enemies, except we, we do like Ivy here. We, we've already talked about how we like Ivy here. So what happens? Um, another case of looking like they didn't know they didn't get the memo. I love that she can get away with that. It's just so satisfying. And more Asker content for the uh, anyone on Faithful, now you know. And even with growing wind, she gets that shot off on Byleth, which is just amazing. I mean, that's sort of assisted by uh, the DOS from Robin, right? But we gotta take it. We gotta take it. It's not even as much of a swing because it's not uh, blazing wind, it's growing. So if it's a 6 debuff, it's only 6 damage, you know? It's not the most. Also, yes, Asker did just tank two rounds with Inter Edelgard, so a round of applause in the comments for Duo Asker. Give the man a hand. Give the give the couple a hand. Give the duo a hand. Give that unit some applause. I think they really earned it. And if you think they didn't, well, consider this. 
Is that not worth putting your hands together? Just an unironic wipe. May, I hope it didn't go too rough for you this week, but, um... I gotta say, I love the proof of concept. Now... Um, this is why I said things stop being good at a certain point. You might think it's just, oh, Levin, your rank one got ruined on the last day. That's so sad for you. You don't understand. You will want to watch this. So, bear with me. You two will be either rolling on the floor laughing or, or subsumed by a rage that, uh, maybe there isn't a super healthy outlet to get out. I don't know. Let me know down below how this affects you, because... You know he had to be here too, you know there was no chance that he wasn't also going to be here. So what happens here? It seems like they actually get the memo. So we go on in. Alright, that's a big chunk of damage. They lived on one?! He lived on one?! I lose rank one to that? The fighter strand blazing wind, I get that every time! But they lived on one. Could've just run blazing wind. Maybe they would've positioned differently if I had blazing wind. I don't know. All I know is that I am allowed to be as mad about that as I want to be. I have earned that right. And... Try as he might. The SS4 gets uncharged. And somehow one-tapped. I don't know. The swing between some of these Winter Byleth matches is... It gives me whiplash. I don't know. I don't know how we're going from... Ivy tanking this to Duo Asker getting, like, aggressively overkilled. It's pretty nuts. And, of course, they have to finish it off with Yuri because life is pain. Anyway, one last replay to get our hopes back up. Wow. Incredible. Hard fought, but the team finishes it off in the end. So, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you again real soon with another video, but it might be for a different game because I'm going to uninstall this one after that match. I think that's a good decision. <sighs> anyway, till then.